end of the day, uh, long story short, Honda's where it's at. If you don't try, you never know. Right. I do like to, to go party with the boys and, you know, <laughs> maybe with them a little bit down the straightaways. <laughs> yeah, that was one thing I noticed between the K20 and the K24 was oil temperatures. Today we have Shay Graven. What's going on? <laughs> Thank you for uh, making your time today. Oh yeah, thanks for coming down. Yeah, I'm a little biased, but this is a beautiful car. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Definitely not super clean. I mean, I know it looks good with the fresh paint. This is just a single stage paint job on it, but, uh, but man, this thing's been a beater for a little while and it just recently started looking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> what year is it? Uh, this is a 2000 EK Civic. It's a CX model, so no power steering from the factory. Roll up windows, bare bones. I picked this thing up, uh, Four, four years ago, maybe five at most. Running through, uh, I had a RS3 previously. I, I started tracking with a few buddies of mine and Russ and Sean and Jeff and Vinny and Mark. We've been going for quite a while now, but I started in an RS3 and that thing was a lot of fun with just wheels, tires, sway bars and, and springs and ended up hurting the motor. Started uh, making some noise and jumped into a ZL1, 1LE, a 2018 and had a ton of fun in that, but tires were just it melts tires and those things are 1600 bucks a set. Uh, my first day out at Chuck in that car, I ran a 154 in the Camaro and it was a fast car, fun, yeah. super fun car. Was, all I did was just like intake exhaust and a tune with some E85 and that thing was making almost 700 at the wheels. And <laughs> man, it put it down, tons of traction modes, but end of the day, uh, long story short, Honda's where it's at, <laughs> where it's at. It's a bang for the buck. Uh, what, what you can run in these Hondas once you learn how to drive them, they're hard to beat. Yeah. How did you get into track days? I got into track days. I was doing it on a street bike first. Uh, so yeah. I started on like super motos. I've always ridden dirt bikes growing up. Uh, my brother and I ripping them. And um, so we kind of switched over to street legal super motos. Okay. Uh, DRZ 400s. And so we were doing Chuck Walla all the time. And my buddies were always saying Russ and Sean and Jeff were trying to say how much faster their Hondas were than my street bike <laughs> at the track. Um, and so, you know, cause I wasn't really doing lap times on my street bike. I knew it was fast. Long story short, it was around 2.0 is what I was doing at Chuck on that thing. They weren't wrong. The Hondas, <laughs> the Hondas do rip pretty good. <laughs> so you got into Hondas and then it's life changing experience, yes, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So four or five years ago, whatever it was, maybe even six, you know, my, I was in the Camaro and it was just tires, man. It's, to do a track day, it's a $2,500 event, especially if I'm doing track insurance in case someone hits me, you know? On, on the Hondas, I'm not doing track insurance because they're, they're cheap to fix, but in a, in a car that's, you know, 60K, I just don't trust everyone around me. So yeah, I came to the realization that uh, the Honda is the right way to do it. And all my buddies were already doing it, so they knew all the recipes. I grew up around Hondas and street racing. I've always known about them. The, I'm the type of person that, that that it's never enough power wise. Um, so, you know, I started uh, with a K20 Type R in this thing. Unfortunately, tapped the oil pan uh, over Phil Hill, put two in the dirt right there, and I was running a Unit 2 steel baffled pan. And it, first of all, the, the K motors hang lower in these chassis. Right. And so that was the first thing that hit. I saw my oil pressure gauge tank. Right when I jumped back on track, I jumped on it, looked at my oil pressure gauge, saw it was down at 30 PSI from like 100 and uh, shut the car off, but it wasn't soon enough. So when I pulled the motor, decided to, to try the K24 route. And it really wasn't much less power or anything, you know, with the intake header exhaust um, and a tune, but it just wasn't enough for me. And, um, you know, I decided uh, to start looking for like a Jackson Racing Supercharger and okay. that's what's on there now. Okay. Why did you choose Civic, let's say, uh, versus, I mean, there's many other Hondas out there. Yeah, you know, it's always been the, um, the 99 to 2000 hatch that's caught my eye. One of my buddies had an SI growing up and I really like that, um, you know, I think I call him the EM1. Um, I really like that look too, but the hatch has always been uh, the car that I'm drawn to the most. So I knew that's what I wanted when I started looking. I think you made the right choice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the chassis a little bit. Sure, sure. This okay. car. So um, what's been done to it? This has a DC2 subframe, lower control arms, um, prothane bushings. It's got Coney Race uh, front struts with swift springs and ground control um, little coilover sleeves. The rear is actually still Coney Sport. I haven't uh, replaced those yet. It's got a pretty fat rear sway bar on it. Just from going like a half a turn stiffer and on the rear sports, the car will go from understeering to oversteering. So I, I don't feel like I need to mess with the back so much as the front just felt a little sloppy mm -hmm. and loose. And with the, uh, the race, I recently put those on. They feel good. What are the uh, spring race? Uh, they are about 750 up front and like 670 in the back. Okay. Uh, Swift. Okay. All your arms are pretty much stock replacements? So the front are just factory DC2 with uh, new prothane bushings, DC2 subframe. The rear 
I forget what arms it came with. They're like some aluminum aftermarket. Uh, which I just put new bushings in it. It came with a solid mount uh, rear trailing arm bushing, so there's no rubber in there anymore. Um, those things clack kind of hard, you know, if you hit a big bump or whichever, but probably adds a little rigidity and a little less deflection, you know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty basic though overall. It's nothing, you know, nothing that, that the Honda boys don't, don't know about. Uh, 15 by nine wheels. This, these are just some Toyo R88Rs I wanted to test out. This is uh, Sean, one of my buddies, Convoy, saw uh, a set of these wheels just posted brand new for like 500 bucks. And I went and picked them up two days ago and, and, and tried out the 23550 um, profile because it's a taller tire. Mm -hmm. uh, normally it's it's a square setup, 225 50 15 AO52. Um, and this setup is a little big. I think I need to add a little bit of camber just to avoid bashing my fenders on the track. But uh, but yeah, I, I do like the taller tires, and and with the supercharger, man, you want you want the longer gears. What about the brakes? Those are remanufactured Type R calipers, okay. uh, Mini Cooper discs, DTC 60 uh, pads up front, and just HP Plus pads in the rear, okay. with just a rear disc conversion off of like a um, DC2 Integra. Doesn't take much, huh? It doesn't take much to go fast. No, man. I mean, you got you got guys still in B series out there, just you know, 200 horsepower, uh, running sub two. I mean, I'm I'm definitely not that guy, but I do like to to go party with the boys and you know, maybe <laughs> with them a little bit down the straightaways. But most of these guys eat me up in the corners still. I'm just not quite there as a driver yet, but I'm still learning the the front wheel drive ways and. Um, there's a fine line between hauling ass and spinning out at 90 miles an hour, and uh, that's not, you know, that's not what I'm trying to do. So. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that uh, with, with Hondas, it's actually really easy to spin out. Yes, right? it is. Yeah, once you start, once you start cooking and going sub two, um, you know, like Chuck Walla or Button Willow, I mean, you're going fast enough to, to do some damage if you, if you go off at the wrong wrong spot. So yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've had my spin-offs, luckily not yet with, since it's been painted, but knock on wood, it's all about having fun and, and just battling with the boys. Uh, this thing does, uh, at Chuck, my, my best time so far is a 158 flat, and um, at Button Willow, 159 flat is my best time so far. Um, still Good. learning the car, still changing parts, but uh, we're, we're chipping away at it. Okay. Do you have a goal? Yeah, you know, I think this car with the amount of power it makes is totally capable of, you know, sub 55 at both tracks. Like, you know, just, I think with Sean or, or Jeff or even Russ, um, one of these guys hop in here and learn the, the car a little bit, I think they could probably do it. My brakes have been wonky for a while. Uh, recently, I realized that there was no, um, there's like a one-way vacuum brake from the brake booster. Um, it wasn't, the car never had it. I didn't realize it, it needed it. And so like for the longest time, man, my brakes, once they started getting hot, like my pedal would like go to almost to the floor. Oh. And and then lock up, you know, coming into yeah. some corners. And so I was backing off and lifting really early, even when I was running 158, just because I didn't trust my brakes. So I, I realized that recently. I haven't been back to the track since. And um, I can tell you just from doing like canyon runs and and, uh, and ripping around that uh, the, the pedal feels a lot more consistent. Um, so so yeah. hopefully, you know, that helps. Maybe it doesn't, but uh, I should be able to break a little bit later now, I think. This thing's held together with freaking zip, cut, zip ties and electrical tape, man. <laughs> so yeah, OG uh, Jackson Racing Supercharger. Wow. Yeah, it's got the Merc Racing uh, in inlet on it. Um, the, the OEM Jackson Racing Inlet is just really short and it's not um, it's not centered, so it's like really restrictive. Th you know, it's 74 millimeter skunk throttle body and then a, just a ghetto fab four inch intake with a six inch uh, velocity stack and some methanol injection just to cool the supercharger. <laughs> Got a little bit of everything going on here. Yeah, this is uh, a little homebrew you know, garage built car. I, I motor swapped it in my garage, you know, when, when I had issues with the uh, K20R. And um, thanks to, you know, Sean really, really pushed me on this this car um, and getting things going. So so thanks to him for all the knowledge. Because I mean, without him, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know. Even swapping to a K24, you have to change a bunch of little random things like the, the crank sensor, it's repinned and, and wired differently. So you can just buy a jumper harness and then the water neck off of um, the thermostat housing needs to be angled down. I mean, there's a bunch of weird stuff, but anyways, we got it to Together. went in really easy and um, here we are okay I've never seen a gold uh, plate <laughs> hot sport mount before I Is have that... never seen it either that was a uh, offer up special <laughs> so I don't know I thought you can order them that way I, I did look them up before I bought them oh. um, you can order them that way um, these were the EKK2 mounts because with the K24 you have to run the adjustable mounts originally I had the EKK1 which is not adjustable and with the K24 in here, I don't know if it, it may fit, may not fit, but it hangs even lower um, to the ground. So 
Um, yeah, this motor is a JDM K24A from H Motors, and it's just got a Type S oil pump kit in it. So um, I think I rev it to like 7,900. Um, it's got a uh, the, still the Type R trans with the factory LSD in it. Uh, it's got a competition stage two clutch and just the uh, K20 Type R flywheel, factory six speed trans, DC2 properly depowered steering rack. Yeah, I mean, other than that, it's, it's running 10 PSI peak on the supercharger of boost. Uh, the methanol is activated by boost. It comes on around seven PSI. I just recently had it tuned by Daniel at Churches and uh, put down uh, 403 on their dyno. Wow. I popped it on my buddy's dyno jet just to get some roller numbers and uh, it's like a 9.2% loss from church. So it's, you know, right in the neighborhood of um, 360, 370 at the front tires. Right around 288 is what it put down torque uh, on church's dyno. So not bad, it's plenty not of power. Yeah. yeah. The battery is something I'm testing. It's not very clean over there. Um, but uh, that is a lithium iron battery. Mm. It's only two and a half pounds. It's got 450 cold cranking amps. Jeez. And it's got a built-in little BMS. If it ever overheats, it tells you like how many volts. So it's 13.7 volts right now. Nice. Super powerful battery, new technology. Um, really cool little thing. What does something like that cost? Well, it just depends on um, where you buy it, who you buy it from. I mean, you can buy them here um, for 400 bucks, 500 bucks. And then if you wait, if you buy them overseas, you can get them for a couple hundred bucks and they're still really good quality. Mm. The new technology. Yeah, I like to try out new things. Sometimes yeah. it, you know, stuff doesn't work, but if you don't try, you never know. Right. I've been kind of pushing the boundaries with all these guys too since I jumped into this thing. And we, I started, you know, NA K20 and then it, NA K24 and just was never enough. So I always, <laughs> you know, ruffle these guys' feathers. I, I did cams in my K20 when I had it, BC cams and E85 and just to get that extra 15, 20 wheel out of it to pull on these guys down the straights, you know? <laughs> uh, no, I, I wanted to boost this thing. Uh, what I wanted something linear that didn't have a big torque hit, you know, cause with the turbo, it's hard to put traction down sometimes uh, with that big torque hit once that thing spools up. With this, it's very linear. So as RPMs increase, it also builds boost. So like down low, when you get on it at 4,000 RPMs, it's only making maybe seven and a half, maybe eight PSI. As it, as it reaches red line, it's getting, getting to about 11, 10 and a half, 11. Um, so the power is real progressive and, and smooth, but it's very fast for, for a little Honda. This thing weighs about 2,500 pounds with me in it and a full tank of gas. So yeah, not too heavy. What about the brakes, uh, the, the brake master and booster? This is, uh, the master is stock still, whatever this car came with, okay. I, I haven't changed it. A lot of guys will run um, a different master that gives you, what it does is when you change it for the bigger calipers is it makes the pedal a little more controllable. It won't lock up as easy. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier that I, that I didn't have forever, um, mm. that vacuum brake, so it's a one way. Um, so I wanna drive it with this before I change the, um, the master. Uh, that's still the factory one and the brakes do feel good when they're hot it's just they get inconsistent they were getting inconsistent like the pedal felt like it wanted to go to the floor and then the car would lock up and that's no good <laughs> <laughs> you do still have the same uh pen though huh you, i have a unit two, two yes okay. that new one is uh, aluminum though it doesn't flex oh is that um, right okay. so that's yeah that's like their baller pan that thing man I, that thing was as much as a k24 but yeah I, I had to get away from the steel pan just because how low these motors hang in this chassis is like you're asking for it if you're running a steel pan that can flex because your oil pickup sits right there at the bottom and so i mean i learned the lesson the hard way oh. don't run a steel pan in these in these swaps in this chassis run an aluminum pan because that way if you bash your pan hard enough you're going to spill all your oil out you'll know right away your car is going to smoke i mean you can shut it off and be, be totally fine. You run the steel pan, especially if you don't have an oil pressure gauge. You even tap that thing if you street drive or anything on the track, on a curb, whatever. I mean, you're just asking to, to hurt your motor with the steel pan, mm. with the way this, how low it hangs, you know? Um, that's a pro tip right there. I learned that one the hard way. Yeah, pretty basic Sparco seats on the inside, um, PCI mounts, um, K-tuned billet race shifter, Momo steering wheel, it's got a, NRG quick release, nothing special. Uh, AM wideband, um, innovate oil pressure and temperature gauge, little boost gauge down low just to make sure nothing funny is going on. SI gauge cluster. Um, I just have floor mats, no carpet, just floor mats uh, front and rear. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, and LRB door cards, um, which is just bolt right on. <laughs> Nice. It's a, a methanol tank. That's okay. just what I use to cool the supercharger. Seven gallon tank. Um, Imer Engineering bolt in cage. These guys do good work. Um, it's nice because it bolts at the shock. 
shock tower instead of like the auto power that you have to bolt to the right wheel well what yeah. um ecu are you are you running so this is a factory ecu with hondata v4 so i have like um you know the app on my phone it's bluetooth and i can i can see everything and take air temperatures you know timing boost all that stuff coolant temp check error codes it's a great feature and it's really easy to use you know your meth isn't spraying um I like looking at my intake air temperatures because I have the methanol plumbed in before the intake air temp sensor. So anytime I'm floored, my intake air temperatures are going sub ambient, you know? So if it's 70 degrees out there, I'll see like 58 degrees charge air temp, which is really good for, you know, the supercharger, keeping things cool on the track. The one thing I forgot to mention up front too, is I have a huge front mounted um, oil cooler oh, that's that. uh, thermostat yeah. controlled. I've got a um, big oil cooler okay. that's front mounted here. You can see the fittings on the end, in and out. It's a it's a, I think, I believe it's a two row. It was just a bar and plate, um, you know, eBay special that had really good reviews with uh, and 10 lines mm -hmm. uh, set up. And then I have the, the plate that spaces the, the um, oil filter off the motor about four inches. There's like a spacer there. And, and then I, I ran dash 10 uh, lines and there's a thermostat. It's, um, it cracks at 160 degrees and it's fully open at 180. Okay. Um, and that really helps keep everything cool on the K24. How is that routed to the engine? So it, it actually routes underneath the frame rail. Um, you can't really see them because it comes around the front right here. And I, I mounted it to the bottom of the frame rail oh, and it cut, pops. Okay. You, if you look straight down by the filter, you'll see the lines. But. Yeah, that was one thing I noticed between the K20 and the K24 was oil temperatures. The Type R K20 has uh, like a little mini external oil cooler. And mm. man, does that thing make a difference? Because when I went to this, I didn't swap that over. And the oil temps were noticeably hotter very quickly like mm. and that, that was even na so oil cooler is a must if you're tracking a k24 mm. this thing really doesn't go above 190 maybe two maybe it hits 200 after a 20 minute session and i mean mm. i'm wide open on this thing wringing its neck um and it does great <laughs> exhaust is uh it looks like that's a, a kit right so it was part of a kit yeah that's been hacked uh it was a mugen exhaust uh, the SP, uh, it's, but they claim it's three inch, but you know what? Right at the muffler, man, it necks down inside and I didn't know it for the longest time until I noticed a big hot spot on the bottom of my Mugen muffler. It necks down to 2.4 inches. And so it, it was a big restriction and uh, I had them re redo the rear section and I just used a vibrant muffler um, little tip right there and okay. connected to the, um, the existing Mugen resonator and three inch. Hey, I got some uh, questions for you. Sure. B or K? K series, baby. <laughs> Force induction versus NA. Come on, that's, that, that one's easy. I, I like NA, there's nothing wrong with NA, but man, forced induction if you want to keep up with the big boys. Since you came from Camaro, right? Yeah. This may be a sensitive topic. Camaro versus Honda, or the Civic. Oh man, are we talking like for the faster lap time or are we talking, what are we talking? I guess just the overall experience. The overall experience goes to the Honda. Okay. I mean, raw, you know, no power steering, no ABS. It's you, it's like a go-kart. I mean, yeah. and, and you, if you learn how to drive a front wheel drive car fast, you can drive anything fast. We love the Camaros too, guys. We do. Yeah. We do. RS3 versus Camaro. Oh, around a track? Yeah. Camaro, yeah. Camaro, Camaro. all day. Yeah. Camaro all day. RS3 is a freaking fun daily driver, though. Uh, front wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. Oh, I'm going to have to say rear wheel drive on this one. Sorry, uh, boys. <laughs> yeah. um, any shout outs? Yeah, shout outs go to uh, Russ, Sean Conboy, Jeff Craney, Craney Customs. We got Vinny and Mark, and then all my buddies that have helped me put this thing together Jason, Trevor, my brother Patrick. Anybody who's lent a helping hand, I appreciate all of you and, and all the knowledge um, all these guys have given me just to get where this thing's at real quick because a lot of these guys have years and years into this and have learned the recipes and so it's it's uh, nice to know when you jump into this thing that you have friends that got your back so any final thing you want to say when you coming for a ride <laughs> <laughs> thank you man thank you yeah